right, welcome everybody. Um, a lot of requests we have on our distiller products uh, comes with uh, can it desalinate ocean water and whatnot. Well, we're in the Midwest in Wisconsin, so we don't have a local source of uh, salt water, but uh, that stuff looks pretty nasty, doesn't it? And we've used um, some, picked up from our local store here, some canning and pickling salt. We've uh, already added quite a bit in there as much as we can, uh, we can uh, uh, dissolve. And my TDS meter here, unfortunately, only goes to 10,000 and uh, it errors out. So it's well above 10,000 parts per million. I'm guessing, because we added it slowly, uh, on how much we added earlier, and uh, I'm guessing we're probably in the 25,000 range now, uh, because we were at 8,000 with just a couple uh, a couple shakes of it. But um, yeah, this stuff is uh, is pretty bad. It's pretty nasty stuff. And I'll get close, and you can see it is super nasty, cloudy, and um, you know just uh, junk water we had sitting out here in a puddle that we scooped up and sucked into this pot and then added some salt so that we can uh, make our nasty ocean water. But uh, we'll get this uh, boiling. We're going to put our uh, Distilled Light product on here and uh, make some uh, distilled water out of this. All right, well, we're back. We got our little mud puddle uh, boiling here. Uh, we just let it run for a minute or so just so it boils all the nasties off. And then we'll go ahead and set up our uh, collection plate so here is our distill light, and uh, I'll just turn it this way so we can collect out of that. So now the steam's rising out of that, and then we're just using camp uh, pots, and um, you just set the top pot of the cool water on top of it, and seal that gasket, and we will start making water. Now it has to fill up in that collection plate to that little drain hose, that little stainless steel fitting right there. Um, this is one we have sitting out here. It's been sitting outside for months now. We just use it every once in a while on our rocket stoves, so we cleaned it up. But um, this is just, uh, you know, just regular old camp pots, uh, ceramic coated. Um, you can obviously use stainless steel. You know, that's, you know, better. Like our Gravistil system, those are all stainless steel pots. But um, this would work fine in a pinch to, uh, to make, uh, you know, some some you know, distilled water or purified water pretty quickly. And uh, you just need a pot, a top pot, uh, that is at least 10 inches in diameter so that we can seal that little gasket right there you see on the top. The bottom pot can range from uh, 8 inches to uh, 14 inches for our, uh, you know, ring adapter. So that can take just about any pot size. But um, you can see it's already starting to condense in the hose, if you can see that. And uh, we got a little bit of steam coming out of the hose every once in a while, but we'll uh, let this thing fill up. All right, well, we're back producing distilled water. It took about, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes to fill the collection plate up. And uh, we're just running it into this little jar here, this little uh, collection jar, but there we go. And um, this is a manually filled uh, distiller. So, um, you know, once the pot runs out of water, we'll tear it down and, and actually put more water in it if we needed to. But, um, you know, outside with cool water in the collection, it's gonna produce uh, quite a bit. Uh, we average, um, I don't know, we've gotten as much as 14 cups the first hour. So just, to sh just shy of a gallon of water. And then uh, you probably have to re you know refill it after that. But, um, but anyway, we're gonna run this for a while, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll test the water and see what it looks like. Going from seawater salt levels and nasty muck to uh, purified drinking water. Now uh, our you know our Gravistil system, which is our larger, that has the float the float mechanism in it so that it automatically monitors and fills the boiling chamber. This is our boiling chamber here, uh, one that we run out here all the time. But uh, So you don't have to manually fill the system. It can just run continuously uh, with our feeder tube that comes out of the condensing section and our collection plate that sits on top. But, uh, but anyway, 
So that just gives you the difference between the two. This is a less expensive uh, distiller um, so that you can uh, use your own pots and, uh, you know, very portable. You just put your pots together and throw it in a pack or wherever you need to go for emergency use. But you can see our water level. And um, we'll check back here in a little bit and show you the production. Let's see if you guys can see how the evaporative cooling. Now you don't, a lot of people think you need to have cold water in this top pot. You actually don't. I mean, we're still producing water. You can see water coming out. We had to switch cups. We're waiting for the other cup to cool so we can show you the TDS uh, levels. But um, this is how the system works. Evaporative cooling. The pot on top continues to evaporate and through evaporation, cools the top pot. So this thing is, uh, this pot's probably running, I mean it's warm water, I bet you it's 140 degrees, something like that, 150 degrees, and yet we're still producing water. So you'll get some water vapor, but this is an open distiller. I have explained that in our past videos. An open distiller means that the system's not going into a closed container so that volatile organic chemicals, uh, you know, anything that you don't want in your water can boil off and actually evaporate. Now you'll always get a little something that can transfer in the water, but I mean, this is for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, perfectly drinkable water. Uh, I'm going to estimate that uh, we're going to be somewhere in the 10, you know, 0 to 10 parts per million total TDS uh, from using this uh, nasty, muddy, salty water that we made that we're boiling off. You compare that to a reverse osmosis desalinator. Uh, desalinators are, uh, you know, at best going to be 98% salt rejection. Well, if you still have 2% of the salt at 30,000 parts per million, you're going to have in the neighborhood of 70 to 100 parts per million on the TDS meter. Uh, some are a little better depending on how they adjust the pressures and everything, but uh, you're never going to have perfectly, you know, zero TDS water with a uh, desalinator using reverse osmosis. Um, it's just impossible, but uh, we'll get pretty close to zero with this using distillation. And um, just wanted to show everybody that uh, desalinating salt water is definitely possible. You can see the salt that has dripped off of our pot here a little bit and then has hardened on the outside of the pot. It's just uh, from condensation dripping around that edge a little bit, but uh, nothing really to worry about too much there because our water production is still up pretty high, even though we're, uh, we've got a hot condenser pot now. All right, well, we just ran a little batch here just to show you guys the desalination process and um, here's the before water you can see we dumped some of the boiling water out and you can actually see the salt that has dried on the outside here <laughs> look at that <laughs> but, uh, and then here's the boiling chamber afterwards well that's nasty uh, obviously we didn't leave it we didn't even clean this thing we just grabbed some water out of uh, the pond in the back, the scummy stuff, and then dumped a, I don't know, a pound or so of sand, or not sand, of salt in it, uh, just so we can, can kind of see the salt down in the bottom. <coughs> Still didn't uh, dissolve all the way. So I would, uh, since my meter only goes to 10,000 parts per million, and it's arrow, arrowing out, um, uh, you know, I'm unable to get a true reading of what the salt content is, but I think the maximum is 40,000, where it won't, uh, it, uh, you know, won't dissolve in the water anymore. So, uh, we might be there now that we've boiled some of it off, but, um, we're going to let this cool down and, uh, we'll show you the TDS meter here in a moment on the production water. The TDS meter doesn't like hot water for some reason. 
but uh, we'll, we'll let this cool down a little bit and uh, we'll be right back. All right, we're back, guys and gals. Um, the water's finally cooled down that we can do an accurate uh, TDS test. Um, if you don't know, TDS is total dissolved solids. We're basically measuring the electrical conductivity of the water. The higher the conductivity, the more dissolved solids, such as salts and things in the water, uh, that can conduct electricity. So, you know, ocean water, which we measured out, we, you know, my TDS meter only goes to 10,000 parts per million. Um, so uh, ocean water is typically 30,000 parts per million or greater. Uh, so we measured out and calculated out that we, uh, this water should be right around 30,000, give or take. It doesn't really matter too much. It's really, really salty water. Let me turn this thing on here. And uh, you can see that my little meter errors out as soon as I put it in there. And, uh, and you know, so it's, it's above the threshold of this meter for this. But like I said, we're, it's above 10,000. Um, next, I want to show you guys, this is our tap water. Typical tap water um, from municipalities uh, are going to be in the 300, maybe 400 parts per million range, uh, give or take. And, um, you know, that's, that's considered decent water. I mean, softened water would be in the 200s. Uh, that's pretty soft water. So this will give you an idea. Here's our tap water right out of one of our uh, filters. And uh, we're at 355. We have pretty hard water here. We're on well, well water. So I'll go ahead and rinse that off again. And here is the water that we produced in our uh, Distil Light product. So that took the 30,000 plus parts per million. And now we are at, if you can see that, eight parts per million. That is pretty dang good. Um, that is perfectly potable, drinkable, sterilized. It's been boiled, obviously. Sterilized and recondensed uh, ocean water. So, um, so that is, uh, that's how it works, guys. Um, you know, we just ran this for a little while and produced, uh, I think we made like two or three of these things while it was running. i um, in the shop working as well, so I'll just let it run while we're doing it. But um, this is how the system works. You're boiling water. You set this on top of a boiling pot. The steam rises up through these holes, hits the top of the condensing pot that has the cool water in it. It condenses in here and drips and runs out this little uh, stainless steel fitting and hose. This is a, a surgical high temperature uh, you know, uh, uh, silicone tubing. Um, so it's FDA approved tubing. But um, that's how the system works. Our larger system, uh, which is our Gravistil, you can see the parts and pieces here with our float and, and there's our collection plate and everything. That is the system that uh, can run as a distiller, desalinator, or as a gravity filter as well. So we have in the bottom there, there's actually a bolt with our feeder tube. You can see a little stainless steel tube here. Well, that sits on top and actually feeds the boiling chamber. So you don't have to manually fill the boiling chamber. This system uh, can run basically indefinitely until you have to clean it. Uh, it will eventually get so much calcium and junk in the bottom there that uh, it'll need to be cleaned. Uh, it'll just simply stop working from all the, the junk in the water. But, um, uh, you know, th this system can run either way. So if you guys have any questions about this, let us know. Um, you know, some people have asked, you know, what can it desalinate? Well, you know, if you're, if you're not familiar with reverse osmosis uh, desalinators, that's what they use on ships and boats and commercial desalinators, um, the best you can hope for is, you know, typically 50 to 100 parts per million on a really good system. Uh, most of the systems that are out there, like the hand pump uh, units, that are made for emergency, that's gonna put you in the 400, 500 parts per million range, which is still perfectly safe. Uh, saline for your body is 10,000 parts per million. So, so that kind of gives you an idea of the salt levels. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, either leave a comment on the, on the video, or you can go to our website at SHTF and go. That's stuffhitsthefanandgo.com. And, go .com. and uh, we have all our products listed up there. If you have any questions, just shoot us an email. Thanks for watching.